I'm sure glad to be here. I'm looking over my right hand side in our uh, Brother Moss. We do have folks that normally sit right here. I don't know where they are today, but uh, they normally are here. These are first time visitors. And I said, you know, they're sitting here wondering where, where are these folks that normally sit here? But they're here in spirit, I believe. But I wish their body was with them, okay? All right. Well, have you, have you had a pretty good week this week? Hey, Amen. Miss Baker and I, we went up to Virginia to a camp meeting up there and drove with Mr. Miss Rowell from Gant Street. And he, he did the driving. And he really, we, we, he increased our prayer life. His driving is, there's a guy in the Bible named Jehu. He's one of David's chariot men. The Bible says he drove furiously. So I told Brother Gene, I said, you have driven like Jehu. He said, oh, Jehu could keep up with me. And, uh, but anyway, I'm glad to be in the house of God. All right, well, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll have a couple congregational songs. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for uh, helping us be here again today. What a privilege it is, dear God. And Lord, we sure don't want to meet in vain. We want your presence to be here. We want the Holy Spirit to have his way in every heart and every life. So every song that we sing, God, may you uh, smile upon it and show favor in it. And Lord, help the preaching of thy word also. Now I'm well aware we have folks here, Lord, who are going through a tough time in, in all kinds of ways. So Lord, I pray that you'll give them some help today in the service. May we worship you, dear God, and forget about the world for a while. And Lord, for that one person who may be lost today, that lost sinner who needs Christ, we pray they'll be saved today. Now, Father, we pray for the sick who couldn't be here this morning. Our Part of our church family, Lord, some of them are very sick. And Lord, we pray you'll minister to them. And Lord, we got some today who may be traveling somewhere out for various reasons. We, Lord, ask you to bless them. Now, Father, have your way. And all that goes on, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. What number we got? Four. 403, let's everybody stand. 403, let's sing now. Verse 3 again. I like it, don't you? Ba verse 2 says, Boundless as the universe around me, reaching to the farthest soul away. I tell you what, we all found on the same mud hole, weren't we? Lost in our sin, condemned before God. That's where we found us. Then I like that verse 3 love beyond human comprehending. We can't understand the depth of God's love. I'm glad I've received it. Know it. Amen. Amen. Let's sing verse 3 one more time. Amen. All right, let's sing it like saved me. Love beyond our human comprehending. Love of God in Christ, how can it be? This will be my name in never ending. Great redeeming love of Calvary.
right, while you remain standing, let's turn to page number 91. Number 91, oh, what a day yes. that'll be. Amen. 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 sickness, no more pain, no more heartache, whatever's bothering you now won't bother you in heaven. There'll be no bothering in heaven, okay? No bothering, no mess ups, and no, no nothing. How about that? Just, oh, beyond our human comprehension, what God's got prepared for us. All right, I mentioned earlier about our first time visitors over this is the Moss family. They have over in the Smokes area. Well, well, Lions, how far y'all live from Smokes? Okay. They live in uh, past Earhart, and so they live in that neck of the woods. I was up there in Ashton for a while, close to Smokes. We're glad to have you with us today. <laughs> Amen. All right, any other first-time visitors with us? Any other folks here for the first time? We do have another. Like she's back with Miss Helen over here. She was here last Sunday, I think it was, or Sunday before, and uh, she's back, and that's a real blessing. All right. And uh, all right, I think we got a little ringing up here. You might want to cut it down just a smidgen, okay? This is a new mic. We're trying to get the... Uh, kinks out of it and uh, I still think it's got a little ringing up here okay all right let's get these announcements out of the way and then we'll have another another uh, congregational song tomorrow the Low Country Baptist Fellowship will be meeting up in at the Gantt Street Baptist Church right outside of Columbia and Casey right off I-26 just about maybe uh, when, when you go around the block it might be a mile but from the interstate it's maybe a half mile and it starts at 3.30. All the details are in the little magazine out there, the Exhorter magazine. Uh, Brother Willis will be preaching tomorrow afternoon along with another gentleman. I, don't, I can't remember his name. Two preachers. And then after that, we'll have supper. And then Joe Arthur will be preaching tomorrow night. How about that? So I uh, hope you can go up there and be a part of that fellowship meeting. And uh, we hope to, as soon as possible, uh, we're going to be having the buildings painted. You coat of paint on, on the building. We'll have them washed down real good and repainted. And that'll be nice. And then uh, it's just three weeks away is homecoming the first Sunday in November. Now, what you need to be doing right now is inviting folks and reminding them, we got homecoming, now homecoming. And that's the same weekend you change your clock. So you get an extra hour, ladies, for your meal that morning to fix it. And uh, all right, uh, Brother Gary Beal will be our guest preacher. Brother Gary it was an evangelist for, for many years, or I say a few years, and then he went into the pastorate and been pastoring now for over 20 years. And now he's back in evangelism. And uh, so he'll be with us. And the Hoy family will be here singing. And, of course, we'll have other, uh, other folks singing on that day. So it'll be a great day on homecoming day. We do have in the foyer some uh, uh, brand-new tracks. It's got gospel tracks. And that track can go where you can't go. It'll speak when you can't speak. 
just share them and give them out, mail them out. And you get these envelopes in the mail. My wife does this. You get stuff in the mail, it's got a return envelope in it. Well, she returns it with a track in it, no matter what it is. And uh, she'll send it back and, and uh, all right. Then a prayer request, if you have any prayer requests, we have a prayer box in the back. There are prayer cards in the back of the pew. You can fill it out and put it in the offering plate when it comes around or put it in the prayer box back there. And we'll list that in our bulletin each and every week. All right? Okay, I think everything about the announcements. Let's have another good congregational song. Amen. Amen. All right, you can remain seated on this one, page 341, Victory in Jesus. Amen. 341. sing to victory down here because the victory is ours amen it is our victory we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to enjoy the victory all right anyone have a birthday in recent weeks or days we maybe we missed you anyone i know of one and she asked me not to mention her name so i won't but she's coming up here right now but uh i won't mention her name and i said just make it easy on yourself and come on up here and behave amen hey miss deborah Mighty lovely today. Yes, ma'am. You have a good birthday? You did. And you got stuff, didn't you? Mm -hmm. All right. I see Kenny smiling back there. That's wonderful. And what day was your birthday on? 
<laughs> Somebody had to inquire, said Tuesday. I, I understand, Tuesday. And you know you're not getting old. I can't remember. You can't remember? <laughs> okay, let me see what I got here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars. You know what the number seven is in the Bible? You've been listening to me preach, haven't you? <laughs> Thank you. Now, what's the number of eight? For perfection and completeness is seven. Eight is new beginning. New beginning. So you need one more dollar, don't you? Yeah. New beginning. Yeah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> she said, do you have another one? What you got in there? What you got? That's <laughs> <laughs> the new beginning dollar, okay? This is she said, what else you got in there? All right, let's sing happy birthday to Deborah, okay? Happy birthday. Tell you what's a blessing, I always have a birthday, and got another year here. In heaven, there'll be no birthdays. We sing that song in a million years or a thousand years. In heaven, you won't know when a year's gone by. Won't need no more about a calendar. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible says, All things be new. And what we live by today, we won't live by up there. You won't need electricity. Woo! <laughs> no power outages in heaven. Isn't that? Uh, Streets, streets that are pure gold. Not concrete or asphalt and dirt and rock, but pure gold. Mm. Can't wait to get there, amen? All right, the choir's gonna sing a couple specials. Listen carefully. <laughs>
They're doing a good job, but we need a little help. What's the thing? You should know the second verse. If you don't, just join in on the chorus. Amen? All right. I have If, you, if you're that way, just bump elbows or something, okay? Uh, fist bump or elbow bump or whatever. It's good. It's wonderful to be saved, isn't it? I, I said it's wonderful to be saved. Even though you might not, things might be going, what you might think, sour in your life right now, the greatest thing in the world is to be saved, to be saved. A lot of folks may walk out on you in your life, mom or dad or spouse, mom, your children, best friends. But I promise you one thing, Jesus will never walk out on you. He'll never walk out on you. And if you'll yield to him, he can, he can, <laughs> he can do things in your life you never dreamed possible. If you just learn to yield to him, obey his word and trust him, it'll be the greatest thing in the world. Amen. Stuck out here in the country, out here in this country, this little country church that still believes the old time gospel. Amen. Believes in God all things are possible. Believes in salvation only through Jesus Christ. Not one work added. You don't need any more works. He took, he's taking care of all that. You're saved, you're saved by grace through what? Faith. And that not of yourselves. You don't even have faith to get saved. He, give you, he gives you the faith to get saved. You know why he said that? So that no man could boast. That nobody could boast. And so I'm glad that's the way it is. All right? All right. Well, it's time. It's just, you're all excited and all thrilled and ready to go. It's time to receive the offering. Amen? Amen. There you go. Yeah. And uh, so uh, this past week, <clears throat> I, went over, I went this past week over to see Brother and Sister Kikos and took him some sort of Lord and church bullets and some stuff. 
You know, he's, I think he's getting close to 93 and she's 91. Next year, they'll be married 70 years. Amen. And so, uh, she's a preacher. Here's my, here's my tithes and offerings. She hadn't been able to come, not able to get out. And so, I, I, I didn't, I hadn't counted it. But I think it's something like 14 checks in here. You know, probably a dollar a piece. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. She said, we sure love the church. And I said, I know we love you too and we miss you. I hate you can't come. And she said, well, here's, here's our tithes and offerings. Isn't that good? Then I got this one in the mail. This is another shut-in family in our church. He's bedridden, can't get out to hardly out to bed. And every month they send their tithes and offerings. Amen. Praise for the church. Praise for me. Praise for you. I carry my bulletin. And here's what they all say. Thank you for the bulletin. We sure like that prayer list. We can pray for you. Amen. It could be we're having good services because these folks are praying for us. Amen. So it's good. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And uh, All right. Well, praise the Lord. So we're going to receive our tithes and offerings right now. And trust you'll give the Lord what uh, he's commanded us to give. And give it, do it joyfully, uh, joyfully and cheerfully. We'll sing the first and last verse of the good song. What number we is? 219. 219. Let's stand. Amen. In the harvest field I ripe mine There's a work for all to do Hark the voice of God is calling To the harvest calling you Little is much when God is in it Labor not for wealth or fame Welcome home, my child, well done. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crowd and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. All right, amen, amen. Just slide on over Brother James a little bit there. There you go. You guys look pretty good down here. Look tip top, amen. You two look really nice. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. Kenny, what you need to do is just let your hair grow out real long, just rake it over. <laughs> okay, and you just you you'd be a hippie and folks wouldn't know it. Amen. James, you ain't far from that crowning day. And Chris, I you look good over here, buddy. <laughs> amen. Oh boy. Somebody said, God knows every hair on your head. And some of them, he don't have to count very much on some of them, amen. Uh, let's pray. Father, we're so thankful that we're able to give today. And we thank you, dear God, for giving to us so much. How you've blessed us beyond measure. And we praise you for that. And we ask you, dear God, to, uh, and I know you will, bless those who give week in and week out so faithfully and, Lord, so cheerfully for the things of God. And I pray, God, you'd help us as a church to spend it wisely on those things, dear God, for kingdom's sake down here, that we'll try to reach the lost right here and around the world. And we ask you, Lord, to bless it. Bless the preaching in a few moments. Help one more special song, dear God. In thy name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
sure appreciate Miss Betty and Sister Ruth and the great job they do on the piano and organ. Well, right before we preach this morning, Brother Tommy's going to uh, sing a song for us. So listen, let God speak to your heart. I just want to thank the Lord for all the things that he's done in, in my life. Um, we got a blessing yesterday and it didn't start out feeling like a blessing, but it was a blessing just the same. Right. Um, a lot of times you don't know what you're facing, how it's going to turn out. And sometimes as humans, we want to know God why. And sometimes answers just aren't enough, but I'm glad that when answers aren't enough, there's Jesus. You have faced the mountains of desperation. You have climbed, you have fought, you have won. But this valley that lies coldly before you Cast a shadow that you just can't overcome And just when you thought that you had it all together You knew every verse to get you through but this time the sorrow has broke more than just your heart And reciting all those verses just won't do When answers aren't enough, there is Jesus He's more than just an answer to your prayer and your heart will find a safe and peaceful refuge When answers aren't enough He is there Instead of asking why did this happen just think where it can lead you from here And as your pain is slowly easing You can find a greater reason To live your life triumphant through those tears Cause when answers aren't enough There is Jesus more than just an answer to your prayers and your heart will find a safe and peaceful refuge when answers aren't enough but a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and grief to bear by the privilege to carry everything 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 to God in prayer when answers aren't enough there is Jesus than just an answer to your prayers and your heart will find a safe and peaceful refuge when answers aren't enough he is there when answers aren't message in that song, isn't it? And answers aren't enough. Jesus is there. You know what that means? That means he's the, he's all I need. He's all that I need. And he's all that you need too. Amen. 
Let's get our Bibles out this morning and turn to the book of John chapter 14. A couple of weeks ago, I, I, I used the first four verses of this chapter for a message on, on heaven, but we're going to go further than that today in John chapter 14. And uh, beginning in verse number one, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Hmm. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will what? Come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Now listen to what Thomas said. Thomas didn't understand it. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Not only am I the way, I am the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Isn't that amazing? He said, you've seen the Father they still, still don't get it. They, it has not sunk into these guys that he and the Father are one. In other words, you're, in other words Jesus is saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I, the Father. Now watch Philip. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. In other words, show us the Father that we'll, that we'll understand. That, 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 in other words, give us what we, let us know. Now watch what Jesus said. Have I been so long with you and ye hast not thou known me, Philip? He that hath seen, uh, he that hath seen me hath seen, what's the next two words? The Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? So there's two right there still scratching her head and Jesus has answered plainly that I, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, believest, believest thou not that I, that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, and he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works thereof. In other words, if you can't take my word that I am the Father and I am the Father one, just look at what, look, look what I've done. Only God could do what he's done. Amen? Only God could do it. That meant that he was God. Okay, if you can't take my word for it, look what I've done. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now we'll stop reading there. Uh, as we go back to this main, our, our first verse here, and uh, I want to preach this morning on let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Now we hear these four verses a lot of times at uh, uh, at funeral services. Folks have passed away. Hearts are troubled. I heard one preacher say that I ought to read those verses at a lot of weddings instead of funerals. <laughs> I don't know about that. I did, I did one time hear a preacher say that at a, at a wedding that we're going, to have two, we're going to have two deaths here today. Two people are going to die. And what he was saying was is she's going to die to herself and he's going to die to himself and they're going, they're going to become one. So that's, pretty, that's a pretty good analogy there. So as we look at this thought of not being troubled, now we live in a troubled world. Not just, you know, sometimes we think, well, there's trouble in the big city and there's trouble in, in, uh, uh, in the metropolitan areas. There's trouble here. I'm telling you, there's trouble everywhere. There are troubled hearts this morning in this building out here in the country. And uh, I, I, I mentioned that Miss Baker and I went up to a camp meeting with Robert Brother Rowell and his wife and now the church he pastors is about anywhere from five to 700 members. And so he said, Brother Baker, he said, I'm finding it more and more difficult for me 
to even, I mean, my people, the, the, the vast number of them having troubles beyond measure. And I look, I've got to think about that. I said, Lord, uh, here's a man that pastors four times when I pastor, and, uh, and, and, and the heartache is there. And so this morning, there are troubled hearts here. And so <clears throat> the, these words in John 14, if you look at the contest of them, where they're at, they're following. He, in other words, this is a continuation of the Lord's Supper. He had just gotten through telling them, you know, uh, this, 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 <clears throat> this bread represents my body. Uh, this blood, this uh, wine represents my blood. And of course, it was not fermented wine. And he said, there's going to be a new covenant, a new testament. It's going to be in my blood. And <clears throat> so he's talking about his death. And so there they are, and they're, uh, they're, they're down. And so he's, he knows their thoughts. He knows what's going through their mind. You've got to understand that these disciples here, every one of them uh, had in their mind that Jesus, they believed he was the son of David. And being the son of David, he would sit on the throne of David. And of course, they were under Roman bondage. They were slaves to a Roman government. And they had the idea that he is the son of David and he is God. Surely he's going to set up his kingdom. Now he's talking about dying. Dying? Yeah, he's talking about dying. And now their thoughts are going haywire. What is going on? We, we, thought, we thought the Roman Empire was going, he was going to sit on the throne and it was going to be a rebellion and be a war and we'd win and we, 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 we'll, we'll be a great nation again. That's not what he's talking about. Their hearts are troubled. I mean, there's questions there and doubt there, maybe some fear there. Judas, when he hears this, he slips out the side back door. He goes and, and puts into action the betrayal of Jesus. And here they are, they're scratching their head and wondering and what's going on. And so uh, Jesus, listen, now when he spoke these words, he was preparing them for more than just his death. He was preparing them for a great transition. And they didn't know what it was, but he's preparing them. Let not your heart be troubled. There's some things gonna come on the scene that you don't understand now. No longer would they work with him and walk with him in a human body. He's gonna die and they would no longer see him with their physical eye. There was gonna come a time here that they wouldn't hear his actual words again. He is gonna die, but we know he dies, but he resurrects. And he is seen after his resurrection, and then you have the ascension. They soon would be, listen, they soon would be endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, they don't know that yet. They don't understand that yet. And the words he's speaking to them here, they, don't, they can't grasp it right now. Think about this. Jesus was preparing them by making a series of promises to them. And right now, as he's speaking these words to them, they don't understand. They can't comprehend, but he's making them some promises. Can I say to you, the very promises he made them, those are our promises too. Amen. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. And so the promises he made those men are our promises today. I'm glad that God keeps his promises, amen? Amen, amen. and he'll never go back on his word. He, uh, matter of fact, his, he honors his word above his name. Of course, his word and his name will go hand in hand. And so this morning out here in the country, I'm glad to tell you that the promises that God made these men, he makes to us today. And they were meant to help them and, and they would get, endure their troubles and their heartaches. Now, what were some of these promises as we see here? First of all, the first promise, the promise of a new peace. The promise of a new peace. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So a promise of a new peace. Now, when I think about the, the peace of God, and I preached on this some time ago, you cannot have the peace of God until you're at peace with God. And God is a peacemaker. Amen. I was the enemy of God before I got saved. My sins made me his enemy. And so God loved me in spite of my sins. He loved me in spite of me not having anything to do with him. Outside his grace, outside his mercies. But he loved me even though I was his enemy. My sins made me his enemy. God hates sin. 
And that's why repentance is so important. Lord, help these churches today who leave out repentance. Oh, you come, believe, and, and God will take you like you are, and, and you really hadn't got to change, and you really hadn't got to give up anything. That's crazy, folks. That is, that's, that's not the word of God. And so he promised that he would, uh, he would give them a peace. And peace is not something that just happens. You just don't say, well, I'm going to have peace today. It's not something that just falls out of the sky and hits you in the head. What is peace? When he said, uh, let not your heart be troubled. P peace is a result of not allowing your hearts to be captured by the fear and worries of this day. You see, the devil wants you to be captured by fear and worry. He wants you to be the, a slave and, and, and uh, let that fear and the dismays and the heartaches of life drag you down. Jesus said, you don't, have, you don't have to live with a troubled heart. You don't have to live in worry and fear and heartache. You don't have to do that. And the reason he's saying that is because he knew what was going to happen to these guys. He knew what was going to come their way. He knew that many of them would be in prison and put to death. And the same thing, the same thing he said to them is for us today. And so he says this so that we'll understand we can have this peace. Think about this. It is easy to have peace when all is well. When the bills are being paid and your health is in good shape and things are in harmony in the marriage and home, and boy, it's what preacher, life is just wonderful. Oh my, it couldn't be any better. Hey, how about when the bottom falls out? and you lose your job, and, and your health goes down the drain, and, and troubles come, and heartaches come, and, uh, and woe comes. What do you do then? I'm saying in the midst of all of that, you can still have peace of God. Peace of God. Peace is an, interal, is an inner result of our choices and our actions. You choose. You choose to have peace. It's a choice that you make it's actions in your own life. The word troubled here, it means stirred up or agitated. Let not your heart be agitated and stirred up. This word is full of, uh, uh, this world is full of agitators. Would you agree with that? Devil been agitating you? Yeah, preach, the devil got my husband. The devil got my wife. The devil got my children. The devil got my kids. The devil got, I'm telling you, the devil is an agitator. Now listen to me real careful. There are a lot of agitators. Right? Uh, when the clothes were being washed, my brother Bird, we're going to go back a while, they had, the wash machine had a, an agitator now, didn't it? Yeah. Amen. Get the clothes clean, you got to agitate them. <laughs> Shake them up a little bit. What God is saying here is do not allow do not allow your heart to be excited or troubled, agitated by what goes on around you, by what you see and what you hear. By what, don't allow that. It is your choice. You can't. It's left up to you. It's just not going to fall out of the sky and hit you in the head and you say, well, I'm not going to be troubled anymore. And so it, it, peace is an, it's an, in, it's an inward result of our choices and our actions. And we see that here. I thought about this verse over Philippians chapter four, verse seven and eight. I'm gonna give you verse eight first. In verse eight, Philippians four, he said, think on these things. Think now. He says, think on truth, honesty, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, and praise. Think on those things. Think on those things. In other words, he's saying, if you're, going to, if you're going to have the peace of God, and that's what verse seven says, and the peace of God which passeth all what? Understanding. How do you understand something? You think. And so the peace of God comes from the way you accept things, the way you see things, the way you receive things, the way you handle things. That's where the peace of God comes from. He said, he said and the peace which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts... Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. And here it says, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
And he lists those things. Truth, honesty, just, pure. So whenever, whenever something comes your way that would agitate you or trouble you or burden you, think on these things. Think on what things? Pure things. Honest things. Virtuous things. The things of God. And when you think on those things, you'll say, well, you know what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Why? Because you're thinking on those things. And, that, and by you thinking in your own, and reasoning, you can say, I do have Jesus. Amen? Because it said through Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. So our peace comes from God as we see the things that he has given us and, and allowed us to have. We have the peace of God. Hey, I, listen, my heart gets troubled sometimes, more often than you think. There's times that, that I'm saying, God, where are you? Then I stop and say, you know what? He's with me. And what I'm facing and what I'm going through, what I'm having to have deal with right now, hey, he sees it, he knows about it more than I do, and he can help me handle it. Amen. Amen. So he made a promise of peace. Aren't you glad of that? And that peace is just not going to drop out of the sky and knock you in the heart or, or your head. It comes because you think on these things. So think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Number two, he promised a new place. I covered that two weeks ago, so I won't spend much time on it. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen, amen, amen. Dr. John R. Rice, who was a, uh, was a great preacher in his day, a great writer. As a matter of fact, he was the founder and editor of the Sword of the Lord until his passing on. We still get that magazine. A great man of God, written many books. And he wrote a, a, a large book on heaven. Questions about heaven, things about heaven. And so uh, when they sent his, his, his first copy back, or if him to look over it, uh, everywhere he had put heaven, they put the word heaven in the small print, small letter, small H. And he's called them back. He said, why is that not a capital H? They said, well, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit. It's not good grammar. He said, is Chicago a place? They said, yeah. New York, yeah. He said, heaven's a place. Put the capital letter back in. <laughs> I like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Heaven's a real place, glory to God. Yeah. It, it, it's a place that he's prepared. And one of these days, that is where we're going to be. Yeah, yeah glory to God. Heaven's a real place. Uh, listen, heaven is where Jesus is. When your loved ones die in the Lord, they're saved, they die, they go to where he is, and where he is is heaven, amen? Yeah. Woohoo! glory to God. As a matter of fact, because you're saved and I'm saved, and we have the Holy Spirit in us, and that is Jesus, I can say to you, we can have some heaven down here, can't we? Ha <laughs> ha, amen. That's all, it's not the real heaven, but we can have a touch of it, because where he is, that's heaven. Think about this now. He will come, he will come again. He said that right there. I will come again, take you to where I am. He'll come to take us to where he is. Aren't you glad? He's made that promise. In other words, uh, he said, I am the way. All you need is me. Fellas, all you need is me. Uh, uh, Thomas said, how can we know? How can we know? And Jesus said, I, you can know because I'm the way. I want to say to you, he's the only way. Amen. There's not 10 different ways to get to heaven. There's not 100 different religions that'll get folks there. This is not the post office. There's one way to glory, amen, and that's Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Yeah, there's some preachers that need to understand that. So he promised a new place, and uh, I'm glad I'm going there, aren't you? Number three, he promised a new productivity. Look in verse 12, uh, what a new productivity. He said, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, he uh, that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now, a lot of folks have mis misinterpreted that verse, okay? A lot of folks have said, you know, you know, we can, because, I mean, we can do the same things that Jesus did and greater things. What is he talking about here? Is Jesus saying that uh, to the disciples, you fellows are going to be just like me. You're going to raise the dead. 
He'll, he'll do all that. He's not saying that. Now, there would be miracles. There's no doubt in my mind these men would have the power of God in their life and that power of God, would they would be able to see things happen in their ministry that only God could do. Now here you go, listen to me real careful here. Jesus was not saying that they would be exact copies of him. He's not saying that. He's not saying you're gonna be just like me and you do greater things. What was he saying? Well, they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. Now listen to me real careful. He's saying, fellas, greater things you'll be able to do. Now, here's why. Jesus, when he walked with these guys, could only be in one place at one time. Would you agree with that? He was in an earthly body. It, even though it was an earthly body, he was sinless. Okay? He was a sinless lamb of God in an earthly body. But he, could only, he could not be in Jerusalem and over in Samaria at the same time. Okay? He was only one. And so because he was only one, now he could do miracles. We know he could do miracles without being there. But he was only one. He could only speak in one place at one time. Fellas, greater things will you do than I've done. You know why he said that? Fellas, I could only be in one place at one time doing one thing. But fellas, when I'm gone, you're going to be able to produce greater than me. You know why? Because my spirit will be in you. Listen now. And, and when it's finally said and done, when my Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you, Peter, you can go one way. John, you'll go one way. Nathaniel, you'll go one way. And as you go, I'm going with you. In other words, you, hey, Paul the apostle was down in Antioch. Peter and him was up in Jerusalem. Are you listening? Greater things. And so here's, here's the clarity of that. When he said greater things you'll be able to, the fact is that right now, listen, Jesus was in one body. Now Jesus, listen, is in millions of bodies. When you got saved, listen now, when you got saved, you became the recipient of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That means you young folks are in school. When you go to school, guess who's going with you? The Lord Jesus. I can't go to school with you. I can't sit in classroom with you. I can't tell you how to live in that school, but I'll tell you what, Jesus can. I can't go to work with you. I can't be at home with you, but the Holy Spirit can go to work with you and be at home with you. I can't go on vacation with you, but he can. Greater works. He said, greater works, fellas, you're going to do. Why? He said, because I'm limited. Why, why was he limited? He was in one body. But now, listen, but now he's in my body, in your 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 body. In, in, I'm talking about in her body. Eight years old? Seven. seven years old. He's in a seven-year-old body. That means she's in what, third grade? Second, Second grade. Tomorrow morning, Jesus is going to the second grade class. How about that? Amen. Joe Ben, you work on the plantation? Danner, how old are you? 72. 72. Whoa, man, you up there, Doc. 72. Tomorrow, hey, 72 year old Jesus is going to be on the plantation working tomorrow. Billy Ray, he'll be with you when you carry your husband his lunch. Amen. I don't know about Rick or not over here, but anyway. He's in Rick. Greater works. Why? Because I can go all over the place. I can't do that right now, fellas. I can be with you. You can see me and hear me. But fellas, once I'm gone, you'll be able to produce what I couldn't produce. Productivity. Are you doing anything? What's being produced in your life as a Christian? Boy, so greater productivity. Jesus is, was in one body, but now he's in my body and he's in your body. And the sooner you recognize this and yield to him and say, dear Jesus, you can say Holy Spirit, you can say Father. It doesn't matter because the Spirit, the Father, and Jesus are all one. Father, help me today. Why can I say that? Because Jesus said, I and the Father are one. 
He sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is Jesus in you. So now Jesus can be in grandmothers, can be in grandfathers. Oh yeah. Jesus can be in the doctor. How about that? Jesus can be in the lawyer or the judge. How about that? We sure need some more of that, don't we? Amen. He can be in the school teacher. Suppose every safe school teacher was to tell the government, drop dead, I'm gonna teach my, I'm gonna carry my Bible to school. That'd change things, wouldn't it? Well, anyway, that's good stuff. <laughs> he said, I, what, you're going to do greater things, fellas. You're going to do greater things. And, and, and today you've got folks who say, well, you know, we can do this and this and this in Jesus' name. I know you can, but I'm telling you, the greatest thing you can ever do in Jesus' name is tell somebody else about him. Amen. So we see that. Then I notice here something else, number four, I believe it is. He promised a new provision. Now, this is, this is unusual here. In verse 13 and 14, a new provision. He said in verse 13, he said, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may glorify, be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, if she shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, here's another, here's another passage. A lot of folks just jump on, don't know what they're talking about. Well, whatever you want, just ask Jesus, he'll give it to you. Isn't that crazy? Now, if that were true, if that were true, that you could ask Jesus for anything you wanted, hey, I, the lottery wouldn't matter, would it? Right. An inheritance wouldn't matter, would it? If you could say, Jesus, I, I'd like to have, like have $10,000. Now, that's not what that's teaching. And you know that. that verse, those verses aren't saying that you can just ask God for anything and he'll give it to you. No. But he did promised a new provision. Now notice what he said. Now, notice the, the key words are this. <clears throat> Verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask, how? In my name. That's the key right there now, in my name. That will I do. Now watch this. Why? That the Father may be what? Glorified in the Son. So now he's saying you can ask anything in my name if it will glorify the Father. And notice what else he says, verse 4. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So he's saying here, what he's saying here is, is, is the key words are in my name. In other words, when you are praying like you should, and you're asking, you're praying in the boundaries of God's will. I said, when you ask this way, you're praying in the boundaries of God's will. Paul prayed, he prayed we know he prayed three times, that's mentioned, he prayed that God would deliver him of the infirmity of his flesh. We don't know what that physical problem was. We don't know. Some believe it could have been his eyesight. We just don't know. But we do know he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Now, I don't know if, I don't know if anybody here walks as close to God as Apostle Paul did. I know I don't. If that man of God could ask God to take that, that problem from him, I think God would have. But God said, Paul, I'm not going to take it from you. It is my will for you to have that. But my grace will be sufficient. A new provision. So that means that, that when, I, when I begin to pray and I want to ask God for some things, if I pray within the boundaries of God and it will glorify God, God said, now listen, Here's what I'm going to do. You may pray and ask for things that's not God's will for you. You may pray for some things that, will not, that you won't glorify God in. He knows that. So if he gave it to you, it would hurt you then more than help you. Yeah, you want that. If I give it to you, you won't glorify the Father in it. You'll glorify yourself. And he knows that. And by the way, you say, well, I, I wish God would, would heal my body. Oh, he will. I said he will. Maybe not here, but there. Oh, he could do it here too. Our good friend, Brother Barry, who normally is right here beside his son-in-law in his wheelchair, in his scooter, I call it. He's coming home from the hospital today. Been back and going back and forth. And uh, he's told his wife, talk about dying. If I die, I want my funeral at the church. I want Brother Baker to preach my funeral. He's naming all kind of stuff. And his wife said, Barry, don't talk, be talking about dying. You're going to live. Amen. But he, he's alive. And one of these days he will be out of that wheelchair. Amen. 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 
Praise God. And so he promised them a, a new provision. God can meet your needs. Amen? Amen? And God is able, fully able and capable of giving you things that you never even dreamed of having. If you'll just be patient, wait on him. New provisions. Amen? <laughs> what a blessing that is. And uh, praying. And then last of all, he promised a new partner. We've already mentioned him, amen? A new partner. He said in verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you, how long? Forever. Woohoo! Boy, that's good. He promised a new partner. Oh, boy. Now, God gave me a wonderful partner in my wife. There she is right over there. Wave at me, honey. How you like that? Amen. God gave me a wonderful partner. Oh boy, okay. And uh, now think about this. I'm her partner, she's my partner with husband and wife. You got your husband, you got your wife here today, amen. And that partner knows a lot about you that other folks don't know. If you really wanna know me, talk to her and she better not tell you, okay? And I can tell you about her and I, and I tell you sometimes, I don't tell you all stuff, amen. But I got a new partner. He's inside of me. A new partner. And, Jesus, and they don't understand it yet. They don't understand it. But that new partner would come on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And I got to thinking about this. He, he will give you another comforter. His, his spirit, listen, his spirit uh, uh, only came upon certain ones in the Old Testament. In other words, the spirit of God came upon Samson. The Spirit of God came upon Joseph. It did not dwell in them. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came upon certain people. The Spirit of God came upon Solomon, came upon David. But in the New Testament, the Spirit of God comes in to us. Amen? I have what David don't have or didn't have. I have what Solomon didn't have. Amen? That's wonderful. I have a comforter. I have another partner. Think about it. Oh my, his spirit came upon certain ones, but today he comes in us. That, and it says here that he may abide with you forever. How about that? That means he'll never leave you. Never, ever leave you. There's a, uh, in other words, if the, there, there's a possibility that my partner over here or I, her partner, that one of us could, could die. And she'd lose his partner, I might lose mine, but I'll never lose him. Amen. And so this morning, I want to ask you a question. How are you and your partner doing? I'm not talking about your husband or wife. I'm talking about how are you doing with the Lord? What a wonderful partner he is. He is. Think about this now. This new partner, he, he, the Bible says, that, uh, that would give different gifts or sign gifts. And that early church, what are sign gifts? Well, sign gifts were those languages that had at Pentecost where they spake with uh, uh, tongues of fire. And those were languages. Those were not unknown tongues. It was a known language to those who heard it. Why was that? It was, it was a necessary tool that those who did not understand their language could hear it in their language. Why? So they could get saved. That tells me that if, if, if God can do it, then he can do it now. It was a sign. It was a sign gift. And it talked about healing. That was a sign gift. Prophesying. Hey, there's, we don't need any more prophesying. Somebody said, well, let me prophesy. What are you going to prophesy outside this book? I got news for you. We don't need any more prophecy. Matter of fact, the Bible says this is a more sure word a more sure prophecy. We don't need any more prophets. Why? We got it right here. Right in your lap, right in your hand. You got it right there. That's all you need. That's God's prophetic book. Amen. So that's not necessary anymore. When that which is complete shall come, that which is incomplete shall be done away. So then he said, then it's going to have service gifts. We're talking about the Holy Spirit now. Service gifts? Yeah. It talks about the gift of helps the gift of administration, the gift of, 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 of teaching, the gift of giving. It, he talks about gifts of service. Listen to me. If you're saved, 
I'm saying it doesn't matter if you're a six-year-old little girl, seven-year-old little girl, or seven-year-old man. If you're saved, you have a gift in you. You may have more than one. What is it, preacher? I don't know what it is. But you need to find out what it is. <clears throat> because the Holy Spirit, your partner, has given it to you. Amen. And you can use it. If you'll, if you'll allow him, yield to him, he'll show you what it is. And all the gifts, all the gifts, you know what it's for? It's not for you. It's for the edification of the church. Miss Betty, God has given you the gift of music. You know why? That's not necessarily for you. It's for them. It's for me. It's for your husband. It's for our visitors. That's a gift that God's given her that would edify the church and glorify God. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. I know some folks got the gift of gab. Now, if you're going to gab, gab for Jesus. <laughs> ah! You say, preacher, I wish I knew what my gift was. God's not, God doesn't have your gift under a bush and we're trying to hide it. The Holy Spirit says, if you just listen to me, I'll tell you what it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. You may have more than one gift, but you got at least one. And all these gifts are used for the good of the church. Then he talked about the fruit of the Spirit. The Holy it's fruit of the Holy Spirit. It didn't say fruits, it said fruit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Let me give them to you right quick. Here they are, Here they are. listen to this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and, and uh, temperance. That's the fruit. Boy, I sure wish I had more patience. Say amen. amen. Yeah, well, you can. Why, you got the one, you got the one inside, you can give it to you. Boy, I sure wish my wife would be more understanding. And she may not be, but God will help you with understanding. I'm telling you, this new partner he's talking about, the fruit of that spirit is, is something else. I, I like what Brother Willis, when he gives his testimony, Brother Alfred, who lived in Cottageville, he said that his wife was saved three years before he got saved. He said for three years, his wife was saved, and he, was, he said, I'd go to juke joints, I'd drink, I'd party, and I'd come home with my buddies, and it'd be 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Miss Lord never griped, never fussed, never argued with me. I'd get next morning, she'd have my breakfast fixed. She'd iron my clothes. She'd, she did, I mean, in other words, she took care of me. She never hounded me. I tried to get her to go out to drink with me. She said, I'm not going. I'm saved now. I'm not going to that. I'm just not going to do it. He said, his buddies would say, boy, when I got home last night, my wife jumped all over me. My wife, I mean, she just jumped down my throat. And, what did your wife do, Alfred? She said, she fixed my breakfast. She ain't said a word to me. I wonder where she got that from. Her new partner, Holy Spirit. As a result of that, for three years of her exemplifying the fruit of the Spirit, long-suffering, patient, kind, her husband got saved. Amen. You know, preacher, I wish I had this, I wish I had that. Well, you can have it because of that new partner. And these fellows didn't know it yet. They didn't understand it. But I got news for you. Buddy, when that day of Pentecost came and the, and, the, and the Holy Spirit came, they became bold in their witness. Bold in their witness. They, they ventured out. They all went their separate ways. But they didn't go by themselves. Under, under the tutelage of Jesus, he would send them out what? Two by two, right? You don't find that anymore. I mean, Nathaniel went one way, Bartholomew went one way, Thomas went one way, uh, Peter went one way. They all went their separate ways, but they didn't go by themselves. They went with that new partner. Ha <laughs> ha! Glory to God. Brother Sam, you never drive alone. You never go to bed alone. When you lay down tonight, he'll lay right down, right down with you. That's why you don't need to be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Oh boy. Well, all these can be yours and mine if we yield to the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus never promised an easy life. 
You won't find anywhere in this Bible that he promised you that you, never have, that you would never have burdens. But he did promise that he's, he's the great burden bearer. He never promised to you that you would not have a storm. But he did promise they would help you in and through your storm. That he, he, would, he would either calm you in your storm or calm the storm. He did promise that. He did pro, he did never, he, he, he never said you'll be alone. He said, I'll be with you forever. He said, in one day, one day, I'm going to come back and get you. I'm going to receive you into myself. Wow, what a day that's going to be. Let not your heart be troubled. We live in a messed up world, don't we? It's confusing. Our government's falling apart. Society's going down the drain. It's a mess. I mean a mess. Churches are getting more liberal than ever before. We're living a messed up day. Preacher, what's going to happen? Is it going to get turned around? Can things be like it used to be? It's not going to be. But I tell you what, in this agitating, aggravating, sinful world, you can have the peace of God if you set your mind to it. <laughs> set it in your heart. Everything's all right in my father's house. Years ago, we taught the kids a song. I wish I could sing it. I wish I could sing it all together. Everything's all right in my father's house. In my father's house. Everything's all right in my father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. Where's the father's house? This is not it. This is just a place of worship. Everything's all right in my father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. How? Because the joy giver's in there. I refuse to kick him out. Why would you want to kick out, kick out joy? Why would you want to kick out peace? Thank you, Lord. Give me peace in this, Lord. God, give me joy in this. Help me, Lord. He'll help. I promise you. But the first thing you got to do is be saved. If you're not saved this morning, you can't have any of this if you're not saved. But if you'll get saved, a great big loving God will move into your life, wipe out all your past, forgive all your sins, come in and take up his abode in you. And if you'll just yield to him day by day, day by day, all these things can be yours. And the life ahead here and then a life there. Amen? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I'm glad I can call you Father because of Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit. And I pray now that you will speak to every heart in this building, every individual who's not saved. It could be a little boy, a little girl. It could be a teenager, a middle-aged mom or dad, or an older person that's not yet saved. Oh, God, speak to them. And I pray, Lord, that you'll convict them of their sin. Show them, Lord, the error of their way. But, Lord, show them how much you love them, and I know you will. And I pray you'll give them, Lord, the faith they'll need to be saved this morning. And, God, I pray for those who here who are saved, whose hearts are troubled right now, whose thoughts and actions, dear God, are, are not confining to your will. Lord, help them. Please help them as only you can. And I pray you'll bless the invitation. Help those to come and pray, Lord, who need to come and pray. Help those who need to be saved, God, come, and we'll show them how to be saved. In thy name I ask it, amen and amen. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Organ is going to play. Would you come right now? You got a troubled heart? Come on. Troubled about your own life or maybe your children. There you go. Here comes a mama and a daughter. How about it, Daddy? How about it, Grandmother? What's troubling you today? Family problems? Financial problems? Jesus said, don't let that agitate you. Don't let that get up under your skin. You got me. Whatever's wrong in your life, you still got Jesus. He's the great reconciler. He 
He's the peace giver and the peacemaker. That's right. Come on. Pray. Well, I love it when children come and pray. That's right. Come on. That's wonderful. Maybe one of you ladies come pray with Miss B. Maybe one of you ladies come pray. There you go. She's got a troubled heart. I know a little bit about it, but not much. Just a little bit. <clears throat> this world is so messed up. So far away from God, it's pitiful. Yet that same God is near, very near to every lost sinner and every child of God. He's near to every sinner to save them. Near to every saint of God to touch them, to guide them, comfort them. Oh, what a friend Jesus is. He's a homemaker, not a home record, but a homemaker. He's a life builder, not a life destroyer. He's a great promiser. His promises are true, fruitful, everlasting. Whatever, whatever it is this morning that may be heavy on your heart, allow Jesus the opportunity to bear it with you and for you. I know somebody, look up at me for a few moments. I know some of you are ready to go, but let me say something to you. You know, sometimes we sing the song, Take Your Burdens to the Lord. Right? And a lot of times we do that. We take our burdens and cares to the Lord and when we get up and walk away, carry them with us. Well, that's not what he wants. Give them to him. Give your cares and give your burdens to him. Lay them upon him. He can handle them. You can't. You cannot handle the cares of life. You cannot handle the troubles in this whole world. You can't do it. They're too heavy. Too depressing. But I'm glad I've got one. I said, I got one that I can go to and say, Lord, would you take this? Would you take this I'll take it. And if he doesn't take it, here's what he'll say. My grace will be sufficient. I'll say, okay, Lord. If you won't take it, then give me your grace. Whichever way, I'm going to be better off for it. So this morning, I want you to leave here with this thought. Let not your heart be what? Troubled. You got Jesus. Amen. It's all you need. <laughs> we ought to kick them doors open and walk out here like this like this like like the folks do when they leave a football game the team's won. Because I'm telling you, we're a winning team. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Betty. Praise the Lord. Hope to see you back again tonight at 6:30 for the evening service. Then Wednesday at 7 for the midweek service. Bring somebody with you, but you be here. And remember to pray for those in our church family who are sick. Amen. All right, all hearts and minds clear. Anybody want to give us a good word of testimony? Maybe answer prayer or something? Anybody at all? We had some in Sunday school, but maybe somebody out here wants to give us a good word of testimony. Anybody at all? Anybody? Back here in the back. Always good to have visitors. Amen. Always have. Whether it's first time or tenth time, we're good to have visitors. Amen. Tom has been visiting here for 33 years. No, he's a member. <laughs> All right, God bless you. You're dismissed. Be careful going home. We hope to see you tonight. <laughs>